This segment of Delmarva Life is brought to you by Peninsula Regional Medical Center. We could probably count on one hand how many of us really want to go see the doctor. So we decide to let you get to know the person behind the lab coat in Driving with Docs. We pick up the PRMC doctor at home, take them to work in the morning, learn the things on the way that you would probably never find out by just sitting in their office. Dr. Simona Eng is of Chinese descent. And with respect to all of our gracious doctors so far, I gotta admit, this particular trip with Dr. Eng was one of the most fascinating I have ever made. Dr. Simona Eng. Thank you so much for letting me drive you to work this morning. Well, thank you for Except, having me today. Let me, let me ask what your official title is. What, what are you? I am an internist by trade, but uh -huh. I am a hospitalist, which means I work strictly in the hospital. Oh, okay. And we're taking you to the hospital now, right? You got it. Okay, we're going this way. You have got the most fascinating story of your family. Please tell me about it, starting with your great-grandparents. Well, my great-grandfather came over uh, during the time that they needed to build the Transcontinental Railroad. Um, so he was part of that uh, endeavor. And then my grandfather um, immigrated over, and he started a laundromat business, typical of the Chinese family, off of Northeast Capitol Street. Uh, at that time, this uh, you know, this was in D.C. Okay. I remember when my gr grandfather was telling me the story, they had riots in D.C., and he was the only standing building that they did not touch at the time because oh I think they had so much respect and they just loved him. And, you know, if they couldn't afford to pay for their laundry, he'd let them have it, you know, just it's just being part of the community. How so. about that? And then, of course, my dad, you know, we, my brother and I are the first generation born here, so my dad actually immigrated over. Mother, you've got a brother. I have a brother. His name is Dennis? Dennis. Tell me about Dennis. He's two years older. He's a great brother. He uh, ended up being a CPA. He ended up, you know, going to Quantico and uh, becoming an FBI agent instead. You like to go out and fish, but you do it with a fish finder. That is correct. I have a dog named Coco. She's part Chessie, part Lab. And she's always on the bow of the boat, and uh, she's always looking. She, so she's our fish finder. She does a great Tell job. me about the PRMC team. What's going on here? So every year, um, I think I've been doing it the last probably 14 years or so, there's a Poor Girls Open tournament. It's for a great cause. It's for breast cancer research, specifically the American Cancer Society. And it's a women's only tournament. And so we get a group of girls from PRMC, and we have a great time raising money for a great cause. Wow. Yeah. You got a pretty good looking flounder here. <laughs> That's a nice flounder. Can I compliment your flounder? Yeah, the flounder. I love flounder fishing in the bay. You know, it's pretty rough out. We'll go flounder fishing, but uh, offshore is kind of my thing. Coming through the ranks and, and doing what you had to do to become a doctor, was it difficult? I joke about this all the time, but it's, it's kind of half truth. You know, in the Asian community, you know, you're either a, a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer. And I didn't that's, like that's math. A stereotype. Yeah, it's a stereotype. I didn't like math. wasn't crazy about it, you know. So engineer was not my thing. You know, lawyer being a lawyer wasn't my thing. Getting up and doing you know trials. So I was like, no, doctoring, it works out. And it fits so, what you like. Yeah. So I went to UMBC, did the BS in biology, and from there went to medical school afterwards. Now, so you graduated high school from Laurel, Maryland. Correct. And you said when you moved to the Eastern Shore, you found out the world was a lot smaller place than you thought. Oh my goodness. I had the most awesome algebra teacher, and you know I don't like math, but I had the best algebra teacher, the kindest man you'll ever meet in your life. When I came here, I was just looking for a house. I, I opened the paper, I'm like, oh, that face looks familiar, but it can't be. It's like, you know, two hours, three hours apart, and it's years later. So we give him a call, he meets us at this house. I'm like, you look familiar. He goes, I do, don't I? I said, you're Mr. Ayers, my algebra teacher. And uh, he was, I mean, he's still working. He still looks identical to his yearbook <laughs> picture. Um, but uh, I see him all the time now, mostly at PRMC functions. Yeah. So he's, I know he's big in the community and so is his wife. Uh, so yeah, the world is very small. That Never is. would have thought. So if you were not Dr. Ng, what do you think you would be doing today? Whatever it is, it'd be service some sort of service to the community. Why? I think it makes me happy to make other people happy, to make a difference in somebody's life. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be in healthcare, it could be in any field. But so long as you're, you have passion and you do it every single day, you get up in the morning 
and that's what makes you happy, then do it, go for it. So I take it that is what you would share with others who are younger, male, female, Asian, or not. That is true. No matter what your field of work, just love it and do it with a passion. If you don't love it anymore, then find something else that you're passionate about. Well, as you can see, Dr. Ng is really an interesting person beyond her doctor's lab coat. We're going to hear from her just a little bit more in just a moment. But first, I want to show you this, okay? Uh, of course, I asked about her husband. There's yeah. her husband now. Uh, this is Glenn. He is an entrepreneur. He came up with the idea of having a, bill, a blade on the bill of your hat. As you can see the... the oh, bill blade. Bill blade. Mm -hmm. And we'll see, direct you to this part right here. This is an earth magnet and it holds things in place. Here's what happened. Here's, here was the first design of what it was that he wanted to come up with. This is called a release blade. Uh, this blade is designed so that EMS can use it, for instance, if they come up on a car wreck, they can cut the seat belt with this and mm. release the driver of the passenger. And it goes right there on the bill blade. Now, actually, he's developed several more things, uh, more than just a blade. Uh, this one here, He's got a bottle opener on it. There's, <laughs> you could, and there's several other things that you could do this with this as well. Okay, be patient with me. Also, if you're a golfer and you're always having to re replace your divots, here you go, a little divot tool that goes oh my goodness. on the bill of your hat. Uh, the options here are absolutely endless. And of course, uh, a knife blade. Uh, this also can go onto the hat. It just goes right there and it's held in place with an earth magnet. That is very cool. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And he, he came up with this. Uh, it's actually going to be officially introduced soon. There are several EMTs and emergency service workers that are very interested in what he's doing with this. As a matter of fact, I've got to get this back to him because it's his prototype. Oh, boy. And we need to get that back. So Absolutely. Yeah. How about that? Fascinating. Very, very cool.